Hey, so today I think what we're going to do is look at another rooting example. So I showed off a application shell style router um, and that has, you know, some centralization that I'm not particularly happy with. You kind of have to redeploy the app shell because that's where the roots are. And the way that I saw module federation working was more where you would weave together roots into a host rather than having a separate repo or application contain all the roots. Um, the idea is kind of similar to pretty much like we're attaching roots at runtime to it. So here's a pretty simple demo that kind of showcases this idea. It's, it does show a different way of rooting. And this way of rooting is kind of what I had in mind of uh, using module federation with. Um, so let's have a look at the app quickly and just see what it looks like. I've got, you know, uh, app2 roots, and I've got some local roots that just come from the file. And I'm going to make this a bidirectional host. So if I go over here, I've got the same kind of concept, just flipped. So I already have this up and running. So we're going to go have a look at it in the browser. So that's port 3001, and that's port 3002. And let's see what happens. So I reload the page. Let's see what gets downloaded. So I get React, a couple other things, and I'll see I'm getting the root file from 3002. So this application is stitching together the React Router uh, paths on the fly. So when I click on the about page, I would expect it to load another piece of federated code, but I would also expect it to root. And there we are. And this app is actually, you know, port 3002. So this is its origin. This is what it looks like usually. And we can also go and refresh it and do the same thing. I see it loads roots. I'm going to clear it and I'm going to go to the home page from here. And there we are. So this is a really simple but powerful concept where you are just merging the root object together and you run it over a switch statement and the actual rooting mechanism is controlled by each independent micro front end. You can add pages as you want, but, but when the user leaves your vertical or the user flow that your micro front end supports, all it does is end up going off to a different component. It's, you know, if, if, you're, if you own the home page and your team only works on the home page, then you really only care about, you know, forward slash. You don't care about forward slash about. <laughs> you, you know, you don't, you don't care about these other roots. They should just work. So the nice thing with this kind of approach is you could stitch together your application's roots. You could have a kind of discovery service. Uh, I have local examples where I'm able to do all of this at runtime. So creating some kind of a discovery service that runs in the browser or runs in you know JavaScript environment could essentially crawl and find federated apps and automatically stitch their roots together into one app. And that way, just whatever is loaded in kind of your remote entry um, is essentially going to connect itself together. You could essentially do kind of a reduce on every remote that you find connected and look for the key object or, so, or look for the key um, roots or something like that. And you would be able to kind of discover roots dynamically. Um, that's definitely one of the cooler things that I've started to prototype out is the concept of not necessarily having to use the Webpack plugin to define everything. So typically we have to write this and you have, you will, you probably still need to expose it either way, but shared and remotes is a little bit limiting if you constantly have to statically update them. 
So that's probably another video to kind of go into how I'm doing that. But pretty much the idea is, is it's possible at runtime to attach more remotes into Webpack 5. Or same thing, it's possible at runtime to attach more shared uh, vendor code. So that's a really neat thing that I've started to tinker around with. And um, it actually led me to find a compatibility layer with Webpack 4. Um, it's definitely not as beautiful as it is in Webpack 5, but if you're kind of stuck in that spot where you have some apps that can't upgrade for whatever reason, it is totally possible to federate between Webpack 4 and Webpack 5. You're just not going to have the syntactic sugar that is provided here with um, the import and require statements. But that's not really a huge issue in the long run. If you're going to upgrade anyway and you just need a way to federate between two major versions of Webpack, a solution like this could be a really key part in upgrading your architecture. You wouldn't have to do it all in one go. You could do it on a small repo and just as you go, attach more.